Hello everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. This video is all about the qualitative analysis tests you do in the first year of the OCR A level in chemistry. For each of these chemical tests I'm going to give you the ionic equation for the reaction and I'll let you know the state symbols for each one we go over. Before we get started just a quick plea to like this video and then subscribe so that you're kept informed of when we upload new content to support your revision. So without any further ado, let's get started. First up in our qualitative analysis is the carbonate ion. Now the carbonate ion, as you can see to the top left of the screen, has the formula CO3 with a two minus charge. And testing for it is done using the very common piece of theory that acids will react with carbonates. Typically, the acid we would use for testing for carbonates is nitric acid. And this is because the nitrate ion that comes with nitric acid, NO3 with a negative charge, won't interfere with any of the other future chemical tests that you may need to do on your sample after this one. The equation you can see on screen is the ionic equation which is often requested in the exam. And like the full equation it produces CO2. The observation for this reaction is that bubbles of gas are made but you can call this effervescence or fizzing if you want. The next chemical test is for sulfate ions, which have the formula, as you can see on screen, of SO4 with a 2 minus charge. Sulfate ions will readily react with barium ions to form a precipitate with the formula BaSO4. The source of barium ions can actually vary, but the best choice so that you don't introduce ions that would interfere with any other chemical test is actually barium nitrate that you can see on screen at the bottom. Otherwise, substances like BaCl2 are okay, that'd be barium chloride, although you may want to avoid using anything that's got halide ions in for later down the line. The final anion that we're going to study is that of the halide ions, which refers to any of the group 7 elements with a single negative charge. The three that we study at A-level are chloride, bromide and iodide. I tend to refer to them as X- when I'm making notes, but in the exam, you must make sure that you use the correct formulae and don't get the name wrong, because you can be penalized for that as well. Now, they readily form a precipitate in solution with silver ions that we get from silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is AgNO3, and that provides our Ag plus silver ion. Now, the precipitates are insoluble in water, and the precipitates themselves actually have individual colors. You can see on screen now, the three colours of our AGX precipitates are white, cream and yellow. You can think of the precipitate as darkening in colour as you move down the group. Now these precipitates of silver halides, they are actually soluble, some of them, in different concentrations of ammonia. So aside from the fact that they're different colours, we can do a further chemical test that should distinguish between them. For instance, AgCl, that's formed when Ag plus and Cl minus react together, is actually soluble in dilute ammonia. AgBr, that forms when Ag plus and Br minus ions are reacted together, is going to be soluble in concentrated ammonia. And AgI, formed when silver ions and iodide ions react, is insoluble in any concentration of ammonia. So that makes it nice and easy to separate from the others. Now, before we move on to the final ion in our qualitative analysis series of chemical tests, we need to talk about sequencing. If I was testing one sample of solution for all the aforementioned ions, then I would need to do the tests in a certain order. In fact, it's the order I've just covered them in. I would do the carbonate first, then the sulfate, and finally the halide. And the reason is because of possible conflicting results. Let me explain. Carbonate ions, for example, will actually produce a precipitate with the barium ions that are used in the sulfate test. The precipitate has the formula BaCO3, and it looks just like the BaSO4 precipitate. So I need to know if our solution has carbonate ions in it before I start testing for sulfate ions. If I just whack in the barium ions, it's not really clear if I get a precipitate what formula it refers to. We can even remove carbonate ions quite easily, should we find any, by adding enough nitric acid so that the fizzing stops. 
Another similar example that you need to know for the OCRA specification is that sulfate ions will actually produce a precipitate with silver ions. The precipitate has the formula you can see on the top right hand side of the screen now, Ag2SO4, and those silver ions are the ones that are used in the halide ion test. So before I start testing for halide ions, I need to know if there are sulfate ions present first. This sequencing is an unusual part of the specification, but OCR aren't shy about bringing it up in the exams, so make sure you're ready for it. The final ion we are going to study is ammonium. It's our only cation in this list of first year qualitative analysis tests. It's got the formula NH4 with a single positive charge, and you can see it to the top left hand corner of the screen, and also it's one of the reactants in our ionic equation. The other reactant is sodium hydroxide, which we represent in the ionic equation as OH-. Now, if we were testing a sample for ammonium ions, and they were present, when we heat our sample gently in a test tube with a little sodium hydroxide, then some ammonia gas will get kicked out. Now, ammonia gas is actually colorless, and so to test for this safely, what we do is hold some moist or damp red litmus paper over the open end of the test tube. If the ammonia gas is present and being kicked out by the reaction, then the moist litmus paper will turn blue, indicating its presence. You must be careful with this though, because ammonia gas is quite dangerous, and so you only want to heat the solution very, very gently. So that's it for qualitative analysis. Hopefully it did clear up any questions or misconceptions you might have had about this small section of the first year part of your A-level course. Until next time, happy revising.